Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom Series. Uh, I'm Rich. This is Leroy. Uh, this is where we go over tips, tricks, techniques, and all those things necessary to learn the woodwind repair trade. In this video, we're going to, or in this stream, we're going to be going over um, how to remove play from the left hand pinky keys on clarinet. So we're going to show you the couple different types of left hand pinky keys that there are commonly seen as well as a bonus tip on how to remove them from professional instruments so this is going to concentrate mostly on student instruments for you amateurs who have are just getting into the repair trade um, but we'll also give you some tips for those of you who have more experience so leroy would you want to talk about the two different types of left hand mechanisms so that they can see the difference between the two yeah absolutely so we're gonna come in over here so on this style here this is our step style so as you can see right here this lever or this foot is actually resting on this lever right here so there's a little step in there and it rests on it which is why we call it the step mechanism and i'm going to push the lever and it just interacts with the key just by pushing it up and down and then the other style is our pen is our pin mechanism. So I'm going to hold this in here. And as you can see, there's actually a hole in that key. And that pin that you see sticking out of that key is actually attached to this key right here. And they're actually in both keys, even though you can't see it because it's hidden behind here, both keys are designed the same. And it works the same where if I push that lever, it pushes that key up. And those are the two basic styles of um, lever mechanisms. Okay, so we have a step style and then the pin style. Right. And then what are the, so what's the most common area of lost motion for both of those? Or are they, is it separate? What's the most common area? Uh, it's the same area on both. Uh, the way to go about it is really similar. Um, and the area to work on is really similar. So a lot of times this, I'll say this problematic area is usually about the same, I'll say, level of problematic area for like the uh, G sharp adjustment on saxophone. That's the thing that goes out of adjustment the most. And this mm -hmm. is the same thing on clarinet. So if you look carefully here, this key here, this is the F, F, C key. This bottom part of that key is called the crow's foot. And the, most of the time what ends up happening is this key if you can see that key right here, this is the B, E key. Most of the time what ends up happening is there's lost motion here. I'm pushing the lever here to make the key work. And there's movement between that key and the crow's foot. And that's the play and that's the lost motion that we want to remove. The first step you want to, to look at first is basically turn that instrument over. And this style has cork underneath those feet to keep the height of the lever and the height of these keys to the crow foot. So in this particular instance, we actually have bumper material or cork back there. So, which is good. If there's not, then you would just have to take the, take the levers off and just put some on there to make sure that there's actually cork on there so it's not key against body. And if you still have lost motion, then you would proceed in the, in the style that I'm gonna show you right now. So basically, what you want to do is you're going to want to either grab one of two things, either cool pad slick like this with a handle. So you have a little bit of extra um, grip on there or just a regular old pad slick like this um, that you can put in your hand between your thumb and the, and the key. So what I'm going to basically do is anchor this key down with one thumb and then the, the arm that comes on this side, I'm basically going to push that arm down with, with the pad slick. And the reason I use the pad slick instead of just my finger is it has a little bit of a, an edge on it. It's not sharp, but if you're pushing on it with your thumb, it's enough where it would actually start to hurt. And you know, that doesn't make it very fun. So just so I have a little bit of leverage on here, I'll just hold this down without pushing extra hard on this one. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor this down with one thumb without pushing extra hard on it. And then I'm going to push on this to basically bring that key foot down. And then I'm going to check it. And there's still some there. And that's okay. That just means you go back and forth uh, between making sure 
that there's no lost motion. Leroy, can I have you? Let's do the super close up on the next adjustment yeah. just so they can see how you have it positioned on the table and how you do that. No worries. So, as you can see, there's a still, oops, there we go. There's still a little bit, very little still there so what i'm doing is i'm holding i'm holding this down mm -hmm. and that actuates this arm back here okay so what i'm doing is just taking this pad this pad slick between the key and my thumb and i'm just basically just giving it a little bit of a push now are you a, what about uh the thing that i was curious about while i'm watching this is what mm -hmm. about marring of the key with the metal pad slick is there anything that's actually a good question and majority of the time when you're doing this you're not putting enough pressure on there to mar the key, but depending on the key makeup and brand, you could. Uh, there is a cool, easy trick to use, whether it be some, um, some felt or microfiber or cork or whatever. I and, usually and just- that looks like black ultra suede. That's exactly what that is. Okay, cool. So I would just basically just put that between there and you can use a smaller, as big as piece as you want. Same idea, then we'll go back over to this one again. And then I would just hold that down. I would just hold that down. Holding the key down. Right, and then push it with the ultra suede or cork or felt in between that and the key, and then just give it a push down there. So that would, if you have any concerns about marring a key, that will take away any of the problems that that might happen. So we're gonna look real close and see how we're how we're close we are, and it looks pretty good. So by holding and anchoring this key down and pushing down on the arm on the back, you straighten the key to where it should be, and then now there's no lost motion between the crow's foot and the be, and this one is still in place as well. And now, is there any sort of uh, visual? You, so it looks like you're doing a. Uh... A physical check there or a visual visual check or both both at the same time okay so what i'm doing is this lever here actuates this key so while i'm pushing down on this i'm actually looking at this key to see if there's movement between this key and the crow's foot at the same time so it's a visual and a and a it's a feel check and a visual check at the same time the other trick you can do is if you're having a hard time with it or you just really want to know um, the, I'll, I'll use to first, when I'm checking pads, I'll usually use a feeler gauge and I'll usually use about, um, half thousands of an inch thick, which is usually the silver, the silver oh. color of that material mm -hmm. As I would, I would press the FC key. So the crow's foot goes down and then I would put that feeler gauge right in between the crow's foot and the key, release that key, and then just kind of give it a tug and see if it's and see if you get a little bit of a grab and if you're getting a little bit of a grab. Same thing when you're seating a pad. If you have a little bit of a grab, that means it's seating or it's actually touching that key. And then you could do the same thing over there too. Just make sure that it's grabbing. Okay, cool. Sorry about my phone. That's the phone is hooked up to the other camera there. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go on to the bonus tip section where we talk about how to remove this uh, play from a an instrument with pins. Correct. In the case. Correct. And the great thing is it's basically the same procedure because the mechanism is, is almost exactly the same. The only difference is the pin goes through the key instead of this, instead of this foot or arm resting on top of the lever. That is pretty much the only difference of the mechanics of the key. How it works is a little bit different. Again, not major, but the way to repair it or fix it is the same. So if you see, this has got a little bit of motion in there, okay? So again, same idea. I'll grab, I'll grab this pad slick, and I'll do a little wrap of the ultra suede in there. We'll get the close angle. So again, I'll anchor, I'll anchor this key down, pushing this key up, and then I'll just go ahead and push that down a little bit and then I'll double check it and then we can we can check it here and that looks pretty good actually so as you're pushing down the lever for the left hand lever you're checking the crow's foot and you're not seeing any motion 
Correct. And if you want to see it where you actually see the whole body here, you can see what I'm talking about. So if I'm pushing in, I'm pushing the lever that actuates the BE key. I'm doing a feel test and a visual test at the same time. And I, and as I'm pushing this and seeing that, I don't see anything. And then I'll also check the, um, the F sharp, C sharp to see if that's still good. And we're good to go. Now, what about, so that's how we, so the, basically it's a similar adjustment to uh, a step style key as Correct. the pin style key. Now, what about the pins? I've gotten questions in the past about uh, there are metal pins and mm -hmm. there are plastic or Delrin pins. If you have an instrument that has, say, Delrin pins yeah. and they break, or, you know, how do you get them out and what can you use to replace them? Awesome question, and it's something that I've seen time and time again because the Delrin style ones are actually designed to break. And the reason they're designed to break is to help prevent excess damage to like the keys in this area. Okay. Um, so the way to go about doing that would be to actually remove the levers themselves. So basically just take the rods out. This particular one has metal pins in it. Okay. But if it had Delrin pins, so this is the pin we're talking about. And then we're gonna get close so you can kind of really see where we're at. So there's the pin that I'm talking about. So this is the key and the pin sticks out at the end, at the end of the key and interacts with, that, with the arm on that key. So now if this is a piece of Delrin, what you can do is, we'll do the the whole key shot and what we would do is if you had a torch whether it be an air torch or a butane torch you would heat this part of the key what ends up happening is that it heats the key up and then the delrin inside expands a little bit and then it'll actually push the broken end out once you see it kind of coming out of the end of the key either grab a pair of pliers or some tweezers and then you basically just take it grab it and pull it out there still will probably be a little bit of remnant inside on the on the inside of the key at that point just take like a poker or something sharp and small in diameter and go in there and clean all that out once you have all that material out of there you can either replace it with uh, the delrin style that's in there uh, they also make um, carbon fiber ones that are the exact copy of the shape as the as that style or you can use like um, hinge rod material and solder one in there to replace it. Okay, so that's that's how you would replace that. And, and then, you know, at Music Medic, we're not trying to sell you anything during our Wednesday Wisdom tutorials, but we do have replacement carbon fiber pins. Um, and we also have steel rods. Now for this, mm -hmm. when you replace a pin with a piece of uh, drill rod, is there anything that they have to remember for that procedure or uh, the, uh, that, that's, that's probably something that we could cover in another video in depth, but just briefly, if you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, the, the most important thing is to make sure that the diameter of the rod is the same diameter as the key. And you basically just find that, make sure that it goes out there, find the correct protrusion of where the, the pin sticks out, solder that in there, and then cut it off to that protrusion. If you wanted to go even a little farther, you could get something a little bit bigger, shape the end, turn down the end that goes in the key, and then get it a little more of the style or shape that comes out of it um, from the factory. But to do something really quick to make sure that it's just functional, you can easily just use the drill rod, solder it in, and then um, cut, the, cut the sides as needed. Awesome. Well, thank you for that demonstration, Leroy. Uh, I don't have any more questions for you right now, so I'm going to end it there. Uh, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we talk about tools, or not tools, talk about techniques, uh, tips, and methods for instrument repair. Uh, if you're enjoying this video series, uh, feel free to like and share and subscribe. And uh, We're going to have more of these. On Friday, we're going to talk about all the different tools and materials and supplies that you might need uh, 
to actually remove and replace a key. This is yeah. a very basic procedure, but it's something that professional technicians, you know, we take that for granted. We've been doing it forever. It's one of the essential items uh, or essential methods or techniques in repair. And so we're going to go over all things like that. Um, we'll go into details and then stay tuned. Uh, in the coming months, we're going to have a couple of courses on repair. Uh, the first one is in June, so check musicmedic.com for that. Um, that's going to do it for right now. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact us. And until next time, happy, happy repairing. repairing.